everyone welcome back to another video i'm just checking if my face is sharp the entire time because that went wrong in the last video um but welcome hi um we are here for another video otherwise you wouldn't have been here and today i wanted to tell you something about my life about how i got here and about my path about my path to self-love um because i think it's important to tell stories to um be inspired by other people's stories and i have spoken about this in interviews and podcasts and a lot of other things but i thought maybe it's nice to have something also on my youtube for other people to get to know me um like how i got here and how i'm here in this video and why you're watching um so yeah i thought that might be interesting to inspire others and to I don't know, just so you know that you're not alone in this and um, well, here we go. So I basically, I've been fat my whole life. I grew up fat, I was a fat child, I was always fat. Um, and my sister is not fat and we are from the same parents and we are from the same nursing and the same everything. Um, so that's the first thing that I want people to know uh, that people are born fat because some people don't think that people are i guess but okay so uh because my mom's side of the family they're all very small and they're all very little and thin and on my dad's side everyone is big and fat and you know so it was like two families combined and well this pretty baby came out and my sister came out also pretty baby a little less pretty than me <laughs> no, that's jokes um, so, but we are two completely different bodies and two completely different people. Um, so, yeah, so I grew up fat and when you grow up fat, your parents, uh, go to your school doctor or to your, your own doctor and they tell you like, like, your kid's too fat and you need to do something about it. And my dad, uh, got so fucking mad because he was like, have you seen me? Um, I'm also fat. So yeah, I know my child is fat and what the hell. Um, but yeah, then you have to put your kid on a diet because as parents you only want the best for your kid And if a doctor says well your kid has to diet and this and that and blah 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 um, Then you do that. So I guess my first diet was when I was eight something like that And it was horrible shakes and it was horrible things and I remember being so fucking unhappy with doing it But I guess every fat kid goes through this because their parents just want the best for them, you know and I know that, I really know that, but um, at the end it was not it was not building up a healthy relationship for me with food. So I definitely wouldn't do that if I had a fat kid. So if you're watching right now and you have a fat kid, don't put them on any weird diets, you know. Just build up a healthy relationship with food for them. Um, okay, getting off the tracks, bitch. So, dieting, but my mom um, owns a dance school. Uh, so I danced like I'm not even kidding maybe 12 hours a week like I danced a hell of a lot but I also had to like work out in the gym and I had to do um, cardio and oh I remember that was so horrible because that's so boring and and I danced so much so I didn't know like as a kid I already felt like what the fuck is there's nothing wrong with me I'm doing everything that I want to I'm playing on the playgrounds and I'm dancing and I'm doing uh, whatever on the streets with my friends and why do people treat me differently you know um so when i was little um i remember shopping with my grandma and my mother and going into the stores and not finding any clothes that would fit me so my grandma and my mom would make some or shorten like the pants or we would uh had to shop on the women's department already but i remember those clothes were so boring and i also wanted sparkles and unicorns and you know and it wasn't just that wasn't in it for me so then i decided i wanted to be a fashion designer so i could design clothes for fat people and fat kids uh so everyone could you know live their ha life happily so uh looking back on that i was always you know conscious about this is unfair and i want something i want to do something about this because no one should have this pain when they're in a changing booth you know and if you grew up fat you know this pain you know the pain of picking a top going into the booth and not fitting it and that pain is a lot you know and definitely as a kid that makes buying clothing and expressing yourself 
almost traumatizing because you can't, you know, and that's super unfair because what the hell, everyone should just be able to dress themselves as they prefer. So, I wanted to be a fashion designer <laughs> and my grandma is, now I come to my grandma, she made clothes for me and my grandma was also a fat woman and my mom isn't. So, you know, my grandma knew what I was going through because if you're not fat, you just don't know how it is to be fat in this world. You just don't know, you know? Just like, I don't know how it is to have one arm, or I'm just saying. Um, so, my grandma knew, so she was, she was my rock, you know? I, I dieted with her and we did it together, you know? And we fought together against the kilos and blah, blah, blah. Um, so, and my grandma was very good at uh, making clothes and sewing and etc. So she taught me, she was gonna tell me how to sew and I already drew like so much designs and I showed them to everyone like, oh my god, would you, you know, would you buy this and this is amazing, right? And blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, well, my grandma was going to teach me, but I have the concentration of a goldfish, so <laughs> it wasn't my cup of tea. And I was like, okay, this is not gonna happen. Uh, but yeah, my grandma was a very important person to me and um, we really did everything together. Uh, but then when I was 15 years old, uh, she had um, a, a, like a minor heart attack and she ended up in the hospital. And the doctor sent her home like, you're fine. And my grandma was like, my grandma was sitting in bed and she was like, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm going home, you know. So, uh, well, we went home and then she got a call like, you got to get back right now because we made a scan. And there are, um, I don't know if you, I don't know how you say it in English, but, but polypa in, in her lungs. Um, so she, and they were like, we don't know how you're breathing. You need to get back. And my grandma was um, 65 at that age, at that time. <laughs> Um, and so she needed to get back to the hospital and then they made other scans and then it appeared she, that she had cancer throughout all her body um, And for the record my grandma didn't drink my grandma didn't smoke my grandma had dieted her whole life But has been fat her whole life as well. She was never sick. She had nothing And she got cancer and this is a disease that you and me can get that anyone you 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 encounter can can get at one point in their life and that has nothing to do with weight and it has nothing to do with how you look or whatever so the doctors told her like you need to go home you need to enjoy your family and um, well enjoy the rest of your time we were all shocked because she was the rock of basically everyone in my family um, so and I was like fucking how what no this is not possible and so like after a month so four weeks she was gone she died and uh you know when you have cancer like at one point you don't eat you only have morphine entering your body and she was thin well thin for her you know she was she lost a lot of weight and then she told me well luckily i'm thin at the end and i was like <laughs> No, 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 this is not good. This is not good that you're dying and you're happy that you're thin. And this is how fucked up society is that it messes with your mind that when you're literally dying, but you're thin, and this is also with anorexic people, that you're still happy with it. And I was like, this is not going to be my life. I am not going to live my fucking life satisfying other people by losing weight and becoming another version of myself just to fucking die of a disease that anyone can get or being run over by a car like I can walk out of my house and be run over by a car right the fuck now and that has nothing to do with my weight that has nothing to do with how I look that's just life okay so I was like everyone who's gonna tell me from now on like no but you're gonna die from diabetes and heart disease is like fuck no you can die from anything regarding your size regarding your weight so that was a point in my life that i was like i am not gonna do this what the fuck i'm gonna be happy with where where i am right now because i did everything i wanted and my grandma i was like fucking hell she was never happy with herself never and that hurts me so much that she was never happy with herself. <sighs> so that was the day that I decided this is not going to be my life. This is not going to be my life. 
So, but this is not something that happens overnight that I woke up the other day and was like, I'm so happy with myself and I love my body. No, that was not the case. You know, it's hard work and it's, and it takes, it takes a while. It takes a long time. Actually, I'm still working on it. Like you need to work on it every day until you die. That's basically what's going on. Um, <clears throat> but then she died and I was like, fucking hell. Now I really need to do something about this for myself, but also for others because... I was like, if I can help little me's and my little grandma's walking around, that that's all I want to do. Even if I help two people, even if I help a handful of girls, that would be everything to me. So, I started um, to photograph. And my mom was like, oh, you have talent, you know, because I was always a creative child. I was never into school or into books. I was always working with my hands and I was always, um, you know, creating things. So I started photographing when we were in Austria on vacation. And my mom was, we need to get your camera because this is something. So I started photographing other people and, you know, I had an eye for it. But I don't think that that's very hard. But okay. Um... So then I decided to go to Art Academy in Rotterdam, uh, the Willem de Koning, uh, and I studied photography there, fine arts, and that was something. <laughs> that school is something else, but it made me really to the person I am today. It teaches you so much about yourself. I had to evolve there, like um, in 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 a lot of ways but at that school I I was there to you know literally hack our visual world because I was like I need my body to be represented in a positive way in a way that I want to because you only see joking fat people in movies you only see a uh, goofy ass fat ass eating lazy ass people it's always a fucking stigma that's shown and you know, you are created as a woman by the images you see of other women. And as people, you just are. You know, if you see a thousand times a lazy as fat person on the couch eating chips and not being loved by anyone, then you're going to believe that that's your... That that's going to be your future. But it's not. Okay, it's not. Oh my god. I'm going to... I'm. I need to screen this right now. Um, so it was like, I want to change something about that because in every magazine that I read, every billboard I saw, I never saw my body and I got so sick of it because it was like, I am beautiful, you know, and I cut my hair off. I had like super short hair and I did a lot to find myself and to, you know, really be like, who am I? Um, and then at school, I wanted to do something with, you know, other bodies and, um, but I also thought, okay, now I can find a fat lady to photograph, but do I take someone with brown skin? Do I take someone with red hair? Do I take someone with blonde hair? Do I take someone with with freckles? You know, it was, it was, I was wondering what value it had with the person I choose. So then I was like, maybe I need to photograph myself. And then y'all my therapy started i'm just saying photographing yourself being in a sacred space with yourself in a camera and just creating your own reality your own fantasies with your own body and finally seeing yourself seeing your body in something beautiful and that was oh, I want, that's crazy. I always tell people, photograph yourself. It's easy. Just put your phone somewhere. Click the... Um, how does uh, how does it call? You know what I mean. The 10 seconds. Boop, 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 boop. And you stand and you take a picture. Honey, at first it's going to be confronting because fuck, you're seeing your body on an image and it's not what you want. Hello. No, leave that behind and just create whatever you want in whatever way you want your body represented. And I swear you will evolve as a person this is not a joke so i did that i photographed myself and you can check my website it's www.lotofaneik.nl and i make things about kim kardashian because i was really angry with kim kardashian at that age because you know everyone wanted to look like her and i didn't understand it because she's fucking dumb as hell and she's not um you know contributing anything to the world she's not doing anything good she's literally just existing 
that was my anger like now I'm like girl do your thing if you just want to show your booty it's fine you know do you but then I was upset and angry with her because I was just like no what the fuck why why do you exist and are you so rich you know um, so I made a lot of projects about her and it was really a motherfucking therapy to embrace my body and be the person I am today and then I went on an internship to Kenya for two months with Jan Hook and that was the best time of my life with uh, Perim and um, and there I thought I need to share this with the world because putting my artwork in um, like museums or galleries there are still only a specific group of people that's gonna see it you know that that is gonna um, um, yeah, yeah see my work and I wanted everyone to see my work I wanted the grandmas to see my work I wanted young uh, girls to see my work I wanted to stay at home mom see my work I want everyone to see what I do so then I decided I'm gonna make an Instagram page and I'm just gonna be a model I'm gonna be a model I'm gonna photograph myself and I'm gonna sell to the world that I'm a model and then <laughs> I actually became a model that's crazy I was first it started like this this project and I was like I'm gonna show the world that you can be a model whatever you know it's 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 not and then people were like oh my god I love you and thank you for doing this and then I realized like okay I need to take this shit very seriously because I'm really helping people with it um so then I I I just continued and um big ass brands and people asked me for shooting with them and being a voice for them and now we're here <laughs> and life is crazy and i'm just saying believe in yourself and this was like my life in a nutshell i I'm sure if I watch this back, I'm like, I should have said this or that, or I forgot to tell this. But this is basically what happened, you know, my grandma passing away opened my eyes because she was such an important person in my life. And she died from a disease that we can all die from, you know. So why the fuck? would you listen to people of course there are fat people dying from diabetes but there are also thin people dying from diabetes you know there are a lot of diseases where people die from and as a fat person you can't only only die from diabetes no you can die from everything <laughs> i mean you can walk over the streets literally tumble hit your head and you're dead like i don't want it to be all like negative but that's just the reality so fucking live your life you know do whatever the fuck you feel like doing because it can be over in a heartbeat and that's just my advice and that's just what the story from oh my god i forgot a oh my god i forgot something important yes i'm sorry when i was 14 i also applied for um code arts that's the dance academy because I danced so much. I wanted to that first. I wanted to make that my profession. You know, I wanted to be a dance teacher just like my mom. And I came to the Havo for music and dance, and I auditioned there. And then they didn't put me in that program because my physics, my my physical appearance wasn't good. They were like, "You're not gonna withhold this. You're not gonna make it with this." body but they, they just basically said you're too fat to do this and i danced 12 hours a week and i was gonna dance 14 hours at that dance school and i was like and that also awakened a fire in me that was like bitch i'm a i'm gonna show y'all i'm gonna show y'all that i am a better dancer than 90 percent of the fucking school i was so pissed and that was together with my grandma those two things there are like certain events in your life that make you to the person you are today and those two things were definitely two moments that I was like, fuck y'all. Fuck everything. And everyone who thinks bad of me or wants me to change. If you don't like me, look the other way. If you don't want to see me, hide in a fucking cave because I'm not going to hide myself anymore. Bitch. So, yeah, I guess we're on 20 minutes. <laughs> this is a long video. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And, um, well, 
it felt good to tell this again though yeah it felt definitely good i'm so proud of myself and i think you you should also take more credits for yourself and uh, to be proud of yourself and to look back on your life and see what you've been through and what you survived and that you're here today bitch so yeah I guess that's it don't forget to push the notification button to be notified when i post another video uh don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like leave some love because i love that i see all your comments i may not react on every one of them but i see and read every one of them thank you so much for all your love already on this weird ass youtube page of mine <laughs> but i love you and thank you for watching and um bye